So last Friday, like I think a lot of other people in Canada, I tuned into the CBC to watch the Fifth Estates documentary about the scandal surrounding their biggest star. It was called The Unmaking of Gian Gameshi. Well, if I'm being precise here, my friend and me, we watched the special online, but if the sputtering quality of the streaming video was any indication, so were lots of other people. I was initially very impressed by this investigation. Watching the Fifth Estate's Gillian Finley drag CBC radio head Chris Boyce across the hot coals of accountability as he squirmed and half-truthed his way through a truly uncomfortable interview was frankly pretty riveting. And it made an imperative case for the CBC. I mean, isn't this what Canada's public broadcasters should be doing? Internal investigations, taking themselves to task? Then the timing of the whole thing seemed rather conspicuous. I mean, the CBC was making a case for the CBC at exactly the right time that they needed to make a case for the CBC. And in light of more revelations and evidence and testimony that came out this week, like a former producer on Q speaking to the culture of workplace sexual harassment, it seemed like the CBC was just trying, desperately, to save face. In light of these and some other recent revelations, like that there may not have been an internal investigation helmed by upper management into Gameshi's behavior as Chris Boyce claims in the Fifth Estate special, it seems like the CBC's actions are just a case of way too little, way too late. And in turn, even the Fifth Estate's investigation just felt like something of a fantasy, another part of the sort of redemptive PR campaign that the CBC has been running, subtly and not so subtly, since the Gameshi scandal broke. I mean, look, obviously there are lots of great, hardworking, talented people working at the CBC, but if something's going to be done about this, it has to be done in a more substantive way and at higher levels. It can't just be Chris Boyce pulling the short straw and having to fess up in front of his network's own cameras, especially when we find out that he might be lying the entire time. I mean, it reminds me of cases like the G8 or the G20 in Toronto, where a police officer will be captured brutalizing a protester, and then they'll get suspended for a week without pay or some other slap on the wrist. But nothing of the culture of police violence or police brutality is ever interrogated. We need more than just scapegoating here. In a way, the CBC is, and maybe always has been, an ideological proposition as much as anything else. We need to feel like we can believe in it. And the way that the network seems to have protected Gameshi, and in turn effectively sold out the women he was allegedly abusing, has, I'm sure, shaken the faith of even the more hardened CBC disciples. And so, for about the thousandth time in the last five years, I think we're all going to be forced to consider what the Canadian media landscape may look like without the CBC.